Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the first Asia Rugby virtual press conference. Thank you for joining us. My name is Lauren Mudgeway, and I will be the moderator today. So we're here to answer a few questions with our interim CEO, Benjamin Van Royen. He will go over a small presentation first, and then we will be answering questions from the register. Please make sure that you put your name, email address and organisation within the question. You can find the question box at the bottom of your screen that's labelled Q&A. Due to time constraints, we may not be able to get through all the questions today, but every question will be answered via a statement at a later date. Over to you, Ben. Thank you very much, Lauren. Um, it's great to see so many participants. Um, thank you very much for everybody joining us. So. Um, I would like to take this opportunity firstly, um, just to run through a presentation and just tell you who Asia Rugby is and what we've been doing and what we're doing and what we hope to do. So we're just quickly gonna run a presentation just for your information. Thank you, let's move on. That's it. So in, in terms of who we are, Asia Rugby is a regional governing body for 36 units across Asia. So we had a small start in 1968 with only eight unions, but we are growing in terms of membership, membership unions. But it also has to be taken in consideration that we have 60% of the, of the world's population, 80% of the world's youth. So yeah, currently we are 36 member unions and we do get member we do get um, rugby communities wanting to form a national governing body and become part of our rugby family. So tournaments, that is where we, we test our competition internally and externally. So we hosting, we're hosting tournaments, sevens and fifteens tournaments right through the year. And these tournaments all culminate in possibility of playing in the women's the men's 15s World Cup, 7s World Cup, but also in the Olympic Games, the Youth Olympics, and the Asia, Asia, Asia Games. So as you can see, we play 7s, 15s, and we have the age grade pathway for our players to qualify into the, into the Olympics or Youth Olympics. And that, that's just the all our member unions. And as we said, we're constantly expanding. So. Um, Hopefully in, in a few years time, we'll see more flags there. Thank you. So um, as part of our membership, un, um, governing bodies become part of Asia rugby. And then of course, they would want to become part of the world rugby family, world rugby associate members or world rugby full members. So recently we had the good news that Surya rugby has been welcomed by world rugby as an associate member for, uh, of world rugby. So that's good news. For us, it shows that we supporting our unions in terms of governance and in terms of development so that they do qualify to become World Rugby Associate members or World Rugby Full members. So um, talking about the current competition that's going on, this is the Asia Rugby 7 Series. Top eight men's and top eight women's teams, they're fighting it out over three rounds across Asia. So our first competition was held in October, and this was held in Bangkok. So what we see on the screen, those are the results. So the men, Hong Kong, walked away with the gold, followed by Japan and South Korea. And then the women's side, it was China, Japan, and Thailand. And then this past weekend, we had the second leg, which was held in Incheon. And we know that Hong Kong men won, Korea with a close second, and Philippines came in with a surprise and finished third. So that was that was good. It shows that more teams have uh, are contenders for the top spot. And on the women's side, it was just the reverse of what we saw in Bangkok. So Japan women taking that one, and, and, and it was a last minute try from, from Japan. So Japan, China, and Thailand. So this is now all building up to our third leg, the third and final leg, which will be held in the UAE. So um, it's all to play for, for the top teams, because we are going to, to crown the winner, the Asia Rugby Sevens women, winner in the men's and the women's. And it all depends on what's happening in the UAE, in the town of Al Ain on the 26th, 27th of November. 
So um, yes, I would encourage everybody to join in and, and watch that two, two days of top quality rugby from Asia, Asia's top eight men and top eight women's teams. Thank you very much. So um, yes, that's that's just to give you a background of, of, of what we're currently doing, what we, the, the, the main competition at the moment is our seven series. And this is what we had in, in Incheon in this weekend in Korea. So um, Lauren. Okay, uh, so we have only one question typed in so far. So please, just a reminder, if you do have any questions that you would like us to answer live, put those into the Q&A box. Uh, we have our first question um, from Lillian. Uh, she is from the South China Morning Post. They would like to know whether the Hong Tan team and the Hong Kong Rugby Union had submitted the correct anthem before the game. If they did, when did they submit it? As the Korean Rugby Union has said, it never received one. What are your comments on that? The Hong Kong police said it will investigate the case now and see if anyone has violated the national security law. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, Lauren, I'm just gonna go through point by point. So the first question is, did the Hong Kong team submitted. Yes, they submitted it in October in Bangkok because before the tournament or before the finals, we do not know which teams are playing in, in the finals. But at our managers meeting, we do remind the managers to provide the national anthem. So yes, Hong Kong management did, did provide the, 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 the correct national anthem. I, I cannot comment on whether Korea Rugby or whether the statement is that Korea Rugby never received one. I, I cannot comment on that one. And I do understand that it is a, a police case and it can be investigated. Um, we do not have any jurisdiction over that. And um, so, yeah, my answer is Hong Kong Rugby did definitely provide this to, to Asia Rugby, and which was then provided to the host union to play at, in, in Bangkok. Can we go to the next one? Okay, thank you. The next one we have is from Sharon. Um, mm -hmm. Again, there are a few different points here, uh, mm -hmm. but the first part of the question um, is what are the penalties for the junior member that made the mistake? This is in regards to playing the incorrect national anthem. Uh, Point two, Korea Times reported that the Korea Rugby Union has never received the recording of the anthem from Hong Kong, whilst Hong Kong Rugby Union have said otherwise. Is there a confirmation of which version is true? And point three, is it true that any staff can just download a song from online and broadcast it as the team's national anthem? Okay, so I think I'll start with the easy one, number three. Yes, it's not possible. Any staff member cannot just download a, a, a version of a national anthem and then let it be played. So I just want to take you through the process. So basically, as I said, we do not know who's going to play in the, in the final game. And that what we ask the managers is to provide us with the, with, the, with the files, the audio files of which Hong Kong did. Now, what happened here is that Korea Rugby downloaded a version from the internet and had it in a folder, a zip folder. And that was the wrong one that was initially downloaded. So when we were in, in, in Shon, the instructions from Asia Rugby Tournament Director was, please make sure that the national anthem for Hong Kong is exactly the same as that for China, for the People's Republic of China. So, on multiple occasions, there was a verbal confirmation to the tournament director that, that, that the, the audio team knew which one to play. So unfortunately, what I do understand from Korea Rugby is that the, in the zip folder, there was a, a, a song, the, the song that was played, the, the wrong one was in the folder and it was never deleted. So for me, from my side, 
I just want to circle back to, 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 to put this in context and to answer the first question. Um, firstly, it was a human error. It was a simple mistake by somebody who was trying her best to download the correct song, firstly. Secondly, there was nothing malicious about this. And thirdly is, I would say, what are the apt penalties or punishments that we do want to give to somebody that has made an innocent mistake? So I would say from my side that, that what, there was no malicious intent in any of this, then it was pure human error. Okay, thank you, Ben. Uh, we have a, another one here. Uh, the question is, uh, it's from Karnas from AP, also on the national anthem. How do the Asia rugby see the reaction from the pro-Beijing camp and Hong Kong government? Do you think that a demand for a probe on national security law level is reasonable or do you think it's a bit overreacted? There is a second oh. part to his question as well. Sorry, Ben. Um, he's asking if the police in Hong Kong have been in touch with Asia Rugby. Okay, so I'll just answer the, the last one first. So no, definitely not. Um, the, the Hong Kong authorities or Hong Kong police have not been in touch with Asia Rugby. I do understand that they have been in touch with Hong Kong Rugby Union and that we are in constant contact with Hong Kong Rugby Union. And as we did in our press release, we did apologize firstly to Hong Kong Rugby Union for the incident that happened and the distress that, that it caused. We also uh, apologized to the Hong Kong government and the People's Republic of China government. So just to go back to, to the first part of the question, I cannot answer anything on, on pro Beijing camp or pro whatever camp um, we stay out of politics we we here to make sure that we administer rugby to the best of our abilities so that asia rugby can be regarded as the best regional association so from that side lawrence let me just go on here and just say that we know that mistakes were made we investigated it very clearly we in constant communication with hong kong rugby korea rugby and internally so what I want to say is from our side, we actually just need to make sure this does not happen again ever, firstly, and we need to look at the remedial action. What, what can we do in future to, to prevent this from happening? So from, from our side, what we do need to do is we need to make sure that host unions only play music that's provided by Asia Rugby. I think we definitely, as a rugby community, we need to move away from YouTube because YouTube can be very dangerous. So somebody with good intentions can search for a national anthem and what will pop up is out of anybody's control. Asia Rugby's control, union's control. So what we would want to do is we want to provide from Asia Rugby side MP3s, not YouTube links or anything, MP3 files and say, these are the correct ones to play. Regardless of who, who will win the, the trophy or who, we will think who will win the trophy. All eight unions that are taking part in the women's and all eight in the men's, their national anthems will be there, firstly. And then secondly, from a host union, we will sign an agreement with them to say, you only play what we give you. Please don't go onto YouTube. It's not, it's not the easy way out. It's the wrong way out. So, And then from our side, we can just update up, update our folder with 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 national anthems and if na national anthems change along the way we change it so we can review that and we can make sure that we have the the correct national anthems the instrumental versions of the correct national anthems for every union and i think our unions would also appreciate that and it would just give us the the, the security the, the the peace of mind to make sure that the right anthem is played. Okay, thanks, Ben. Uh, we have a, a few questions that are going over uh, the similar topics that you've just covered. Um, one was from Josh asking what the plans are to make sure that the, the process is changed to make sure it doesn't happen again, which I think you've just answered there. Um, 
We also have uh, another question uh, from Lillian. Now this is again going over. Uh, oh, uh, can, can I, yeah, can we go to the Lillian one? Yes. Um, okay. With, with, especially with okay. reference to the to the intentions of the person that played yeah. the song. Okay. So according to the current information you have in hand so far, did the junior staff play the wrong anthem accidentally or with any political intention? Any follow up actions, including punishment, will be imposed to the staff. And last, will Asia Rugby provide any information to assist the investigation of the Hong Kong police? Okay. So just just to get back to to who who pressed play. So this this was somebody who was provided with a song. I don't call it a, an anthem, a song, and somebody pressed play. So that person has no understanding of the politics of the world. Um, this is an intern that works that that gives her or his time because there, there, were, there was one who passed it on and one who pressed play. This is somebody who gives his and her time for to grow the game, to support rugby, Korea rugby. So from my side, after speaking to the individuals, I can assure you there was definitely, from my side, I don't think there was any, any ulterior motives in any of this. This was a simple human error from somebody who would, was trying to do her best. Okay, thank you, Ben. Uh, we have uh, another question here, um, and it is from uh, Asia Rugby 247. Uh, another topic, can you confirm the promotion from ARSS 2022 to the Challenger Series contention? I'm under the impression it's the top two men and women that go to the Challenger Series, but how is that affected by the bottom in terms of the World Series being relegated if it was Japan? Also, any update on the Asian Games Sevens qualifications and how it works? Okay, so what I sorry, would, would... Sorry, Ben, just to clarify that Steve Noble from Rugby Asia 24-7. Okay, so Steve, thank you for joining. So this, I think, in, in terms of our time restrictions that we do have here, what we can do is we can prepare a statement from our side to give clarity to, to you that's joining us for, with, with from more from a rugby perspective than, than, a, than a, um, a perspective of to find out what happened with, with the anthem incident. So Steve, please, if you forgive me, we will make sure that we post this on our website to give to give a, a better understanding to all unions um, of, of the pathways towards a, uh, the Asia Games and the Challenger Series. Great, thank you. And we have another one uh, from Alpha Chan. May you clarify on which date the Hong Kong, Hong Kong team coach submitted the national anthem recording to Asia Rugby or Korea Rugby Correct. Nation? And when is the deadline for submitting the national anthems and when Asia Rugby confirmed the recording is correct? Okay, so the at, at the Bangkok tournament on the 22nd and 23rd of October, the, the correct anthem was shared with, with Asia Rugby competitions manager. So yes, that was the first one. We also have to take in consideration that um, Korea Rugby had on file um, the, the the anthem that they played in July when Hong Kong played a, against Korea. So it's it's not as if um, Korea rugby did not have the correct one or did not understand one. I think that puts just puts it in in context that it was just one simple human error. So I hope that answers. I think we still have. Um, a few questions, Lauren. Lauren, if yes. you could, if you could just Ben, if you could just also clarify what was done on the day of the. Okay, so what was okay in in Incheon? Yes, what was done on the on the day in Incheon? So, so as as I said before, we do not know which teams are going to play in the final. So what Korea Rugby had done is they kept a folder with all the national anthems, and as I said. Unfortunately, the wrong one was 
in the folder. Um, there's no site like hindsight. So we can always say they should have deleted it or, or whatever. But on the day, the Korea Rugby Organizing Committee were instructed by Asia Rugby Tournament Director at the specific tournament to make sure we play the same anthem that we would play for the China women's team. Because at that stage, we had already had the semifinals, so we knew which teams would play in, in the finals. And the at, the closing, at the closing ceremony, what, what did you do? Oh, okay, Kuram, yeah, thank you for reminding me. Okay, so this is good. I'm, I'm glad we have time. And that because I believe from our side, from Asia rugby side, what we what we we realized the mistake. We we soon realized the mistake. Um, initially, there was confusion because we we do not know the anthems, but we we realized there was a mistake here. So to rectify this was that we we got the Hong Kong team out with a flag. There was a public announcement in Korean and in English where the organizers apologized for making the mistake. And then we played the correct anthem and gave the players the opportunity to stand with a flag and sing the correct anthem. So that footage is available on, 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 on our website. So if you go through through our, our uh, Facebook broadcast, that is there. So there is what we what we did was we deleted, we took off air immediately when we realized there was a mistake. We took it off air and then fixed the problem technically, which which I think um, does look good. And there is no reference to to that song that was played. Okay, thank you. We have another question from Sean Moore. Can you confirm that no Hong Kong team official or volunteer of the Hong Kong National was involved in the incorrect playing of the anthem? Second question, can you confirm whose responsibility it is to play the correct anthems? And to be clear that this is not a Hong Kong Rugby Union responsibility outside of the events hosted by Hong Kong Rugby Union within Hong Kong. Okay. Um, very, very easy question. Uh, first question to ask, um, uh, to, to answer is yes, definitely. None, nobody from Hong Kong Rugby Union, whether it's player or administrator or coach, was involved with this. We only worked with the manager who gave us the correct one. So definitely. And um, just remind me that I think the second question was quite a long one. Just, just let's read through this again, please. The second question, can you confirm whose responsibility it is to play the okay. correct anthem? Okay, so, so in, in, in our tournament manual, it is the responsibility of the, of the teams to provide the national anthems to, to the organizing team, to the host union. So in, in this case, Hong Kong did provide it. In this, in this case, Korea Rugby confirmed that they had of, of the file on ready to be played. From Asia Rugby side, our tournament director verbally, I, I was I witnessed once, um, verbally questioned the, the, the Korean rugby uh, um, associates to say, are you sure we're going to play the same as China National Anthem? So he got verbal confirmation. What we can do now, if, if you really want to, to, to narrow it down, who should have done what and when should, should things have done, um, perhaps we can say he should have listened to it and confirmed that it was the correct one. Um, but on the other hand, you know, things happen so fast and it, it was a matter of, from the, from the organizing committee side, yes, we know what you're talking about. We, we have it under control and then, from from the tournament director side is okay. I do trust the process. And then when the song played, we all realized this is not what we wanted. To, this is not what we came here for. Okay. And uh, another question from and Ben. Lillian. Sorry, sorry, Lauren. Ben, would you, and the last part is that is it Hong Kong Rugby's unit, unit uh, responsibility outside tournaments held in Hong Kong? Yes, it's it's and and but which they did, yes. Uh, I mean, 
when when any team turns up at any event, we would ask the management management to provide us with the national anthem, of which Hong Kong rugby did. Okay, uh, back to Lillian. Can you clarify if Asia Rugby has passed uh, Korean Rugby Union any song or file? If yes, when did it happen? Is Korean Rugby Union denied receiving any? Thanks a lot. That's right. Okay, so no. Um, for for this specific tournament, no. Asia Rugby did not give any any file to Korea Rugby. The understanding is that the the host union, the organizers, would have that, would receive it from from the participating country. Firstly, and I think this is an, an another gray area where I would say. Um, from Asia Rugby side, there was an understanding that Korea Rugby had this specific anthem on file based on the fact that in, in July, the correct anthem was played. So again, I'm just taking it back to, to what I said in terms of our remedial action. We need to make sure that there are no ifs and buts and maybes in future. So we do need to, to make sure that we we can't expect if if there are too many too many cooks in the kitchen we can't expect too many people to be involved. So Asia Rugby will take the lead here. We will be the only authority that will provide the national anthems to the organisers, and we take the stress off everybody. Okay, I think we've almost hit our time now, Ben. Uh, we're at twelve thirty. Um, so I think that any further questions we may be able to answer um, via a statement, unless you have time for anything else. No, no, I think I think it's it is it is correct for for us just to give an update, and because since our initial uh, press release and our initial apology to everybody involved, um, we have been talking with between the th the, the th three. Unions, Asia Rugby, Hong Kong, and Korea, and and we do we do know we we definitely do know that there was no malicious intent. We know that that Hong Kong Rugby did their due diligence. We also know that from our side is that that we need to put the structures in place to make sure that this never ever happens again. Okay, great. Thank um, you very ben, much, sorry, everyone. Just one thing, Ben. In terms of the statement with Asia Rugby, is was there an apology given? Just to to whom? In the, in the statement that Asia Rugby gave, was there an apology given to anybody? Yes, yes. Uh, okay, so, so that's right. So so what we in 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 the in the formal statement, Asia Rugby apologized, and we also included Asia Asia Rugby and Korea Rugby sincerely apologized to them. Firstly, to Hong Kong Rugby Union and the government of Hong Kong. And the governments of the government of the People's Republic of, of of China. So, and we also stated that we do understand the the importance of of playing the correct one, and we we also do understand that that a mistake like this can cause frustration and um, and yeah disappointment. So um, we did apologize for that, and um, as as we've said. We, we did our best to rectify it by playing the correct anthem. So um, I think in summary, um, we, will, we will again work closely with Hong Kong and Korea rugby unions. And then from there on, we, I think we will, we, we will most probably um, just, just, just get the, from our side, get, get our, our pro procedures, our, our remedial procedures in place. Thank you. Laura, we can wrap it up. All right, great. So as we discussed at the start of um, this, we will make sure that all of these questions are answered. Um, we have run out of time today, but they will be answered um, 
please. I didn't see everybody's email addresses there, but as long as we have your email addresses, we'll be able to send out those answers there. So again, thank you very much for your time today. And uh, if you have any more questions, you can email Asia Rugby. Karam, the email address is live at asiarugby.com. Is that correct? That's right. That's All right. So any any further questions can be emailed to live at asiarugby.com. Thank you. So Lauren, just, just one last one before we go. So I would really say, firstly, thank you for everybody that's interested in this, interested in, in this, interested in rugby. Yes, we want to do the right thing. So um, what I would suggest is please join us on 26, 27 and um, go right through from, from the first kickoff to the last anthem and join us, join us, join us on Facebook Live. Thank you.